Hello, and my name is John Hammond, and I present the local weekly television chat show. And the two snippets of film that you've just seen were from the opening of Community Week. The first one was of the Community Week Parade, which each year signifies the opening of the Commu Community Week. And the second was of the late President Childers, who addressed the people of Ballyfermot at the opening of Community Week. Now, c the opening of Community Week on television was significant because it was the first community relay. And to give you some idea of how it was started, I have with me here in the studio David Connolly, who is manager of the BCA, who arranged all this type of thing. So Dave, can you give us the rundown? Well, the introduction, the initi initial introduction of uh, BCA TV, as we call it, which is Valley Firm of Television, the local channel, was on the 14th of September last year, um, when we filmed most of Community Week. Almost every night we had a programme on for that week. And after Community Week, we uh, have produced a programme each Thursday night um, up to date, that is February 75. Now, in Community Week we found the effect of introducing local television had uh, really got the people involved in Community Week, the fact that we could communicate everything that was happening, the fact that people were watching every night and, and saw the different events that were on during the day, some of the events which they couldn't get to, and the fact that um, by this means of information we could, we could get people out to other events which were on over the weekends or maybe late at night. Since then we've tended to uh, move into the area of trying to get local talent and put them, give them a platform or a stage in the area to uh, perform. We've got musicians, traditional musicians, um, different uh, acts uh, in the local area, from the local area and these have been allowed time on the television. We've also tried to put some sort of an educational um, educational items into the television programmes which would hopefully have some effect on the diff to the different street committees etc. Many people probably know that the uh, Valley Farm Community Association is based on street committees and uh, there are street committees for each, each street in the area and this then goes to area committees and eventually to a council and an executive which are the central governing bodies for the area. Now the introduction of, of community television has allowed the community association itself and other groups in the area to explain to the people uh, what they're doing, what they're about and what they hope to do. Um, this is, has also meant that to produce a programme each week most people will just see the actual programme that goes out but the amount of effort and the amount of sort of problems that you that arise due to trying to produce these uh, local programs and getting local participation in the programs um, is a very great amount of work and we hope to introduce in this program or try and explain in this program some of these problems which we faced also uh, how we set about making a program and introduce to you uh, some of the acts that we've had a few of the different performers that have been on and also some of the other items that we've managed to put onto the programmes in the last few months. Well, thank you, Dave. And after that introduction by Dave, we're now going to show a few scenes from the programmes made in Community Week, which will reinforce David's point on the content of our programmes. The first scene you see is from a helicopter display on the lawn, it's the local um, playing grounds. Two will be a discussion programme made, and three, the winners of the Area Talent Contest, a film which was made at 11 o'clock on the final night of Community Week. Now here he comes, out the door, out the side door of the airplane, and there he goes, down to make the pickup. He's on... What? Coming down on that holder now, the pickup of a man he's dropped about five minutes ago. Just about now, you can see the two men coming back up on that halter. The helicopter ho hovering slowly, it's not an injured person, just in case there may be some serious injury. Here we are, he's going back up now into the cabin. Ah, oh, this looks really great. Costello, how would you? 
Go on, Bash. Um, I think, as Dave said, it's, it's, a, it's a very fundamental question, and it raises the whole question of what is a community association, and it raises the problem of how you uh, make people realise that a community association can help and is of importance and, of, and is of significance. Now, all the people on a road who don't go to a road committee aren't selfish people thinking of themselves. People who don't go to a road, road committee meetings are people who don't see that they have a role to play in it. And I think what's important is for people to consider uh, what a place like Bally Firmers would be like without its community association. I, I think, as, as John has said, they've got to think to the future. And the parents have got to think uh, of the example they give their own children, of the fact that they are, in fact, involved in the community and what their young fellows and young girls are going to think when they see them going, or, more often, not see them going, he giving a hand. And so it seems to me that if people could realise the significance of an association, and to my mind this is one of the most important developments in, in Irish affairs in the last 10 or 15 years, this growth of community associations, not just in Ballyfermot, but Ballyfermot is one of the best of them, but throughout the whole country. It's very important because it's bringing uh, people, getting people involved in their own affairs, it's getting, giving people a sense of community, and um, it's something that I think is good in Irish life. It's something that's quite recent, 10 or 15 years of development. And if people realise this, if the men realise, the women, I think, realise this uh, instinctively. They realise instinctively that this is something by which they can help their families and their streets and their community. If the men saw this too, I think you get a, a stronger, growing movement. I think the prize of the night went to two young gentlemen, John Kenny and Noel Keegan. And together they call them place. The prize of the night went to two young gentlemen, John Kenny and Noel Keegan. And together That you got from the Sorbonne And the painting you stole from the castle Your loveliness goes on and on, yes it does Pay me the third in high places You know, on you all get on He sent you a racehorse for Christmas And you keep it just for fun A ha 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 they say that when you get married, it'll be to a millionaire. But they don't realize where you came from. But I wonder if they really care, I give a damn. But where do you go to my lover when you're alone in your bed? Well, they were excerpts from Community Week Television. And from there we moved on to making a program each Thursday night. Obviously a lot of work has to go into making these programs and to give you some idea of the behind the scenes work I have with Mary Farrell who got us a lot of the material for these programs together. Now Mary can you give us some idea of how a program is actually put together? Yeah um, well we try to have the programs prepared uh, one week in advance. I suppose it would take about eight hours work at least to prepare one program there's uh, quite a lot of people involved in the pre preparation of each programme. For example, we have uh, one person in the community who will look after the entertainment section in the programme, and his job would be to round up the local talent. And also, he has outside contacts where uh, we can bring in outside entertainers uh, into the television. 
We also have contacts with the local sports federation, which is an organisation of all sporting clubs in the area, and they regularly send in results from the weekend sports and news of fixtures that take place the following weekend. Uh, community news forms a very important part in our programme, and again, the local streets will send in news of uh, events that are taking place on the road, or if we know something is happening, we'll go along and find out what exactly is taking place. Uh, another section, local news, are uh, people working in the community. Uh, for the last few weeks, we've taken one person working in the community, for example, a social worker or people from the Child and Family Care Centre. And we brought them onto local television to talk to people about their role in the community and the work and services that are available at these uh, different centres. Uh, different weeks, we've brought on local housewives in the community who um, have given cookery demonstrations one week a girl from the local shop came along to give a demonstration on how to do floral arrangements. We also at the moment are organising an inter-school quiz competition. Uh, all the schools, primary and post-primary, will be taking part in this quiz. The school teachers are preparing the questions and uh, we ha will hope to have a local person in the community who will be the quiz master for this quiz. Um, I can't really... And um, in what like proportions, how do you put a programme actually together? What proportions do you say, like, well, we're going to have three musicians or two interviews, this type of thing? Mm -hmm. Well, a lot would depend on what is taking place in the community that week and what, you know, deserves special uh, mention in the programme, but we generally try to keep about three musicians and then, uh, you know, street news, sports news, local news and maybe some interviews with people in the community. Well, thanks, Mary. Mm -hmm. Well, now we're going to continue with a couple of examples of local entertainment and after that how local news is covered and the example we take for that is the teacher strike in the local vocational school. Anyway, we have an interview now about the BEC dispute and we have with us two people, one Mr Simon Hewitt who is a representative of the teachers on, in the teachers union sorry, representative of the teachers in the vocational school in the teachers union, and Patrick Shannon, who organised a march into town yesterday. It, it was held outside the pro-cathedral where the vocational teachers' ma mass was on. <laughs> so we'll have Simon Hewitt and Patrick Shannon. First of all, Mr Hewitt, could you tell us something like, what is the dispute about? I'm sure a lot of the people at Valley Fairma don't really know what it is about. Yeah. Okay, I think there, there are two main parts to it. Um, the first one is like a trade union point, if you like, conditions of work for teachers. Um, to make it simple, if I take myself as an example, um, I'm qualified to teach in a secondary school or a vocational school, either one. If I choose to teach in a secondary school, uh, I get paid the salary that I'm getting now for teaching 22 hours of class contact time. Uh, if I teach in a vocational school, for the same salary, with the same qualifications, I have to teach 25 hours a week, class contact time. Now, um, that's a simple trade union dispute, if you like. Um, if I want to teach overtime in my own school, I can't do it unless I want to do it for nothing. Um, the overtime, I only get paid uh, at the rate of straight time, and even then, only after 25 hours. If I happened to have gone to a secondary school and I wanted to teach night, night school in Ballyfermot, I could do so and would get paid time and a half after 22 hours. So, because I choose to teach in a vocational school, I get treated less well. My conditions of work are less good. That's not satisfactory to me. Um, now, the part of the dispute that I think would be probably more concerned to uh, the people of Ballyfermot, to the students and the parents, is the fact that this naturally uh, has an effect on the quality of the education that their children are getting. Um, if teachers are faced with that choice when they choose where to teach, the better teachers are liable, presumably, to choose to go to secondary schools where their conditions are better. We don't think this is satisfactory to the people of Bally Fermat, naturally, or to the students, or to us, so that's why the present dispute is on. We want the same terms of employment exactly as exist in secondary schools. Uh, a special request for John Kane and the leader of the Pavi's traditional group. Fair enough. <laughs> Seven long years I've been constant 
to BCA TV and as you see we have a very special program for you this week. Because it is Halloween we decided to come to one of the community functions in the area to the community arts workshop children's section and as you heard at the start we've got about 40 children here all at the session and we are televising it the whole session. We would have a play and as you heard two very good musicians and various interviews etc and also a draw. Now, the next thing is, since, seeing as the kids were so brilliant at seeing that song, we're going to have another song for, from them, and the name of it is Yellow Submarine. So, a one, a two, a three.
think we've come about to the end of our Halloween programme as Lord Autumn gives out the fruit to all the children. And we will end with, you might say, a typical ending from a character we have in here. Evening all. <laughs> Very good. And can we have a big goodbye from everyone? <laughs> Mr. Tully, the Minister for Local Government. Now, Mr. Tully, Mr. Childers, on, a, on the opening day of Community Week, came out to Ballyfermot, and in his opening address, he constantly referred to Ballyfermot as a city. Now, it's a well-known fact that Ballyfermot has not got the amenities of a city, and has the government any plans for the future development of Ballyfermot? Well, you're asking me a question which is not easy to answer. The government have plans for the development of practically every area, but those plans are originally uh, prepared by the corporation. They, they adopt a plan which they submit to the local authority members, and then if there is money required to carry it out, it is submitted to the government. Uh, that's the only place we come in. Now, of course, I think the, the late president was being uh, perhaps a little bit over optimistic if he talked about Bally Ferment in his own right as a city. It's part of a great city. I would hate to see anybody referring to Bally Ferment as a separate entity. The last two scenes that you saw were scenes from two of the occasions when we left the studio to do a programme outside in the community. The first one was when we went up to the community centre on Bally Ferment Road to visit a community arts workshop children's session at Halloween. And just in case you're wondering if the program was very short, we showed you the, the beginning and the end of it. Second one was the opening of the Old Folk Chalets by Mr. Tully, the Minister for Local Government, and the, the interview was done in the Old Folks Hall attached to the chalets. And we're sorry for the interference in the picture then, but it just goes to show you that when a community television is getting on its feet, it learns by its mistakes. Now, our next session, we'll go on to the outside tent entertainers like Syl Fox, Joe Cuddy and Brendan Grace who kindly lent their talents to help promote community television by appearing on Ballyferma Television. The comedian himself now, Mr Syl Fox, who has appeared on RT radio and television. So, let's see what Syl has lined up for us now. There you go. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Very nice to be here. Direct from the Panto and Cinderella. Hope you're all feeling well. All the artists tonight here, I believe they're all here by public demand, and I'm here by public transport. Talking about public transport, I was got down in Kilmainham when the bus broke down. And there was I looking for a lift, and not a car that stopped for me. And all of a sudden, this car came real slow, and I thought he was stopping for me. So I jumped in, because there was no driver. Sat down and got all the way to Ballyfermot, and while I was getting out, another fella getting in. Hey, so you better not get in here, so there's no driver, so you're no blooming well, I'm to be pushing him from Kilmainham. <laughs> But buses are the last, honest to God. Now, this bus was packed, the one I was on. Bus was packed. And your man kept along to me, he said, would you move along the bus, please? I certainly moved up along the bus. Let more people ask you, would you move along the bus, please? I certainly I moved up the top. And then he come along looking for his fare. I said, you must be joking, I'm at the walking here. <laughs> There's an old lady standing on the bus, and I don't like seeing old ladies on the bus. So I said to your man, sir, I don't like to see old ladies standing on the bus. He needed a way, and he threw her off. <laughs> But it's fantastic to be up in Ballyferm, right? Did you see the funeral today? See the funeral? 50,000 fellas falling in the funeral, South Circular Road. And I went over to the last fella, say, excuse me. So say, who's dead? So see the fella in the front hers. <laughs> I said, he must have been important. He said, he was. He was the payout clerk in the labour. <laughs> ah, it's gas the labour, though. I never looked out to the labour. And there was Charlie, and he scratched himself. Hey, so Charlie, are you getting the labour? No, so you're getting relief. <laughs> and someone set forth to his coat. No, set forth to Charlie's coat. So Charlie, your coat's on fire. See, don't worry, I always wanted a blazer. <laughs> and we were coming out, and Charlie had his big dog, what he had. And didn't his dog? I went over and started eating the man's hat up. The fellow came over to him, saying, excuse me, is that your dog? Says, Charlie, yes. And I says, I, what are you going to do about it? He's not eating me hat up, says he. Says, Charlie, nothing. He says, I don't like your attitude. He says, Charlie, it's not my attitude, it's your attitude. <laughs> so where are you going, Charlie? He says, I'm going out to the pet shop. So come on, I go with you. Went into the pet, you know the pet shop parallel street? Went in. And I said to myself, now that we're here, I might as well get a canary for the wife. So I asked your man any chance of a canary. So he got me a lovely canary and he put it down to see, there you are, that's the best singer in the shop. 
But as I look at only has one leg, says he, what do you want, a singer or a tap dancer? <laughs> a Charlie asked for his pet pig. And if I got the pig and took it, I gave it to Charlie <laughs> on the counter. He said to Charlie, says he, they asked us, says he, where are you going to keep the pig? I hope you have a big back garden. He says, Charlie, I've no back garden. I say, where are you going to keep the pig? He says, Charlie, I'm going to keep the house. God says, yeah, man, you can't keep a pig in the house with the smell and the dirt and the filth. Oh, because the chatty, the pig will just have to get used to it. <laughs> Your house like that, isn't it? Well, Christmas time is the grand time of the year. Coming come out of the house now there was, and a nun knocked at the door. She said to me, would you like an orphan for Christmas? I said, no thanks, my wife already ordered a turkey. <laughs> but I remember last year I got a turkey for the wife. It was a good swap, wasn't it? <laughs> I plucked it and stuffed it and shoved it in the oven. All she had to do was kill it. <laughs> At Christmas time, yeah, you know when all the lads, all the bin men, do you know when they come around and a fella comes up to this woman and he says, how are you, missus? It's Christmas. How are you? <laughs> she says, who are you? So you? I'm the fella that empties your bin. She says, so what? I'm the one that fills it. <laughs> <laughs> because you have the mother-in-law living with us. Now, for the last five years, my mother-in-law has come over to me at Christmas. So this year, I'm going to change it. <laughs> We're going to let her in. <laughs> Ah, oh, she's a thing. And every time she sees me, she gets the big lump of mistletoe and she hangs it over her head and she says, Sil, will you kiss me under the mistletoe? I said, you must be joking. I wouldn't kiss her under an anesthetic. <laughs> oh, she's a thing. But I know some people have the right to be ugly, honest to God, but my mother-in-law abuses the privilege. Honest to God. Now, when I remember the day I was getting married, like the rest of you lads, were just standing there. She'd come over to me, she said, I'll dance on your grave. I said, I hope you do. I'll be ready that see. <laughs> Oh, she's a right thing, but honest to God. Sometimes she talks to her nose. I'm not surprised, her mouth's worn out. <laughs> honest to God. You want to see the makeup she wears. Now, I don't know what sort of makeup all the girls in Bally Fairbrook wear, but you want to see the makeup my mother likes. use. Polly filler. <laughs> the star attraction of the evening. Brendan Grace, all your heart throbs. Oh and. <laughs> he's nearly collapsed over there. Well, then, anyway. For anyone who, by some. Fate doesn't know who Brendan Grace is. He's had hit records with Cushy Butterfields, Liberty Boy, Paddy the Peddler, and his very latest hit, number three in the charts, A Visit to Santa. Now, Brendan will introduce himself to sing his three songs. They're going to be one, Lavender Cowboy, two, The Green Green Grass of Bally Fairmers, and three, Vincent. So, I'll hand it over to Brendan. Sound man. God bless you. He will. No, not too you look great. That's just, will I move this a bit, will I? Yeah, fair enough. I'll move it up a bit. Hello. <laughs> Wouldn't know what to be saying, would you? <laughs> I'd like to finish off. <laughs> I'll just move the stool. This is a song which was recently in the Chevy, considered two years ago. It's a song actually, one little alteration in my program. It's a song about a woman who had everything a man requires. Beard, muscles, moustache, and a fine pair of legs. This woman could kickstart a jumbo jet. And her name was Cushy Butterfield, and this is the story. You can all join in together if you want to. I'm a broken heart to comb, I'm beguiled from the start. Be a young lass from Ballyar, and she stole me heart. Her name's Cushy Butterfield, she sells fish on the quay. And if ever she gets married, I hope it's to me. She's a big lass and a bunny lass, and she likes her beer. And they call her Cushy Butterfield, and I wish she were here. Her eyes are like two holes in a blank of worn through. She has two fine big cheeks with a red rosy hue. And when I hear her shouting, boy, fresh fish today. Like the song of the nightingale, she steals me heart away. She's a big lass and a bunny lass, and she likes her beer. And they call her Cushy Butterfield, and I wish she were here. Now you'll all see her down at Toad's Head when the fresh herring's in. Like a big bag of sawdust tied around with a string. She wears big black lushes as she stands with her mate. With her stockings all torn and her hat never straight. She's a big lass and a bunny lass and she likes her beer. And they call her Cushy Butterfield and I wish she were here. There's someone here singing buttermilk. We have them here. Not to worry. When I asked her to marry me, she started to smile. But when she saw I was serious, it soon changed her style. She started off blubbering, and tears came so fast. 
Put the lights on the key, say the match couldn't last. She's a big lass and a bonny lass, and she likes her beer. And they call her Cushy Butterfield, and I wish she were here. Now she says the man that marries her must work every day. And that each Friday night he must hand up his pay. And she'll feed him on mackerel, brown bread and good stout. And she dress like a lady when he takes her out. She's a big lass and a bonny lass and she likes her beer. And they call her Cushy Butterfield and I wish she were here. One more time a big breath. She. Mitchell's town makes the cheese. <laughs> Look, she's a big lass and a bunny lass, and she likes her beer. And they call her Cushy Butterfield, and I wish she were here. You! No. Well, you know, you wouldn't know what age I was to look at me sometimes, but I still remember my school days and the fellow used to sit beside me, Butler. <laughs> Butler was really rough. He was a very rough person. I remember one day he came into the classroom and the teacher, we had a very wicked teacher, very, Miss Higginbottom. <laughs> now, there was three women teachers and three men teachers and none of them fancied each other. Well, they just weren't attracted to each other, you see. So, three of the women teachers weren't so attractive at all. Two of them had no teeth. But our teacher was prettier. She had lips, you see. And one day, she came into the classroom and she was like a devil. A devil, worse than a devil. Like two devils she was. She came into the classroom and she was in wicked form and she bent down to pick up a piece of chalk. And when she bent down to pick up the piece of chalk, didn't Rasher's Murphy whistle? <laughs> says he. Well, she turned around and she gave him such a slap across the mouth with the ruler. Now, not only have things like that happened in school, but I remember we were all out of the line one day for having the wrong sums for our exercise. Because, you see, everybody used to copy off me. <laughs> and we were always wrong, naturally. <laughs> took me two years. I used to copy from the fellow in front of me and it took me two years to discover I was sitting in front of a mirror. <laughs> but anyway, if there's anyone here... There's a few little girls over there, I'm looking at them, and I hope everybody around Ballier is in good form. This song is dedicated to two people who were happily married for 23 years because there was a mistake on the honeymoon. She decided, the girl decided to go to the Canary Islands, and he decided to go to London. And she said, no, I want to go to the Canary Islands. She said, we're going to London, and that's it. She wanted to go to the Canary Islands. <laughs> so we're going to London. So he went to London on his own, on his honeymoon. And this is a story of what happened when he returned for the first time in 23 years. And he met her on the railway platform. It's a song called The Green Green Grass of Bally Fairman. Mm. Now the old hometown looks the same as I step down from the super train midweek of course <laughs> there to meet me was the guardy and the army whoa, 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 yeah. down the platform I look at Harry Mary frosty face looking so contrary no wonder that I run away from home oh, yeah. now the old hag she's still standing though her face is cracked and dragged now she really was a nagger and a messer whoa, 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 yeah. she bought all the records made by Ringo I spent my money playing bingo. No wonder that I run away from home. Oh, yeah. Now, this is the talky bit. Then I wake, I think of Jeannie. 
that I married in Rainey. And then I then I realized that that she was she was only steaming like an electric kettle. Had she married her first love, Sean McDermott, I'd still be happy for the Valley Fair, and I never would have run away from home. Oh, yeah. Yes, they'll all come to see me at the gates of Mount Joy. All the wardens will greet me, but it's better than having to live with her at home. Oh, yeah. Woo! Now we'll have some more music. Our next musician has won the Castle Bar International Song Contest and the RMI Award for the best record. He's also won Opportunity Knox. He's the only Irish, uh, the only artist, Irish or international, to have two number one hits here this year. And maybe he will make it three in a row. Here he is to sing his... There's been a lot of talk about the book of love. It's for everybody everywhere dreaming of. The love bug's busy as he can be. And I got a funny feeling that it just bit me. Cause love makes the world go round and around. Love makes the world go round. Your pulse will beat and your heart will bound. Love makes the world go round. I met a little guy about four feet small. Been in love with Annie, who was eight feet tall. Yeah, 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 yeah. And every time I see them coming down the street, yeah, 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 yeah. I know true love just can't get beat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cause love makes the world go round and around. Love makes the world. the world go round Our goose got loose at the county fair The look time low but she wasn't there Up jumped the candy said leave her alone When she misses her daddy she'll come back home Cause love makes the world Love makes the world go round Your pulse will beat and your heart will burn Cause love makes the world go round No matter what you do or where you go Yeah, 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 yeah You feel a little lonely when the lights are low Yeah, 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 yeah Now everybody's gotta have a love that's true Gotta have you, you, you Yeah, 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 yeah Cause love makes the world Go round and around Love makes the world Well, so far we've seen several snippets of different items that we have done over the weeks in our programmes. We've also tried to show you how a programme is made up and what it's made up of. An important aspect of community television is its relevance at present to the community and its future development. I have in the studio now Mr John Sweeney who is President of the Ballyfermot Community Association and is also a member of the Tele -so television subcommittee of the same association. Oh, John, would you like to come in on any of the points I've made? Hello, John. Good evening. Well, I think I'll take up the last point you made, and that's the point of 
a television subcommittee. I think this is the most important step in the initial stages and to be with it all the time. We had the idea when we had the relays that we could work in a local television setup. This we have done. Uh, we had our basic reason, and that was communications. We all complain, complain of communications. To us, the television has been uh, a way of getting over some of the problems in communications. We had our first step was getting a production staff together. We got those, and we found that it was not just so easy to walk out and put a program together. In fact, to do an hour's program, it will possibly work about eight hours to get that put over. But believe me, in the long run, it's very well worth the effort. And I'm sure any other community who eventually gets into this will find the same satisfaction that we have found. It has, needless to say, the opportunity to view in a very close light all the happenings in the area. It can bring them into the studio, talk about them. The people around uh, have the opportunity to comment very quickly because the local setup is there on their doorstep. We have the advantage over national broadcasting of being able to do this. And uh, I can see all kinds of uh, opportunities for local television to involve itself in. The uh, idea of education, the idea of recreation, the ideas that stem from the needs of a community can be brought out and developed uh, in, in a television studio much more quickly and much more precisely than having to get a column wrote up for a paper. Needless to say, it has a tremendous local interest because the local people know the people that are on in most cases, and they realize their own potential from the kind of situations that are developed in the local setup by hearing the comments and, above all, the discussion and arguments that develop. It develops their interest and gives them an opportunity to feel that at least they have uh, a proper way of getting their, 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 you know, their gribs or whatever it may be across. The future. It has a tremendous future. In fact, in the short period of time that we have local television here in Ballyfermot, I wonder how we managed without it previously. I see local television not only in Ballyfermot but in every community in the city of Dublin and probably in the future in every townland in Ireland. I think this is what we really need. It's an opportunity to uh, get ourselves in, into some kind of order. It will bring us all together and that I think is one of the bases of community coming together. It's going to take a great deal of hard work, this we know. But believe me, and as I said a little earlier, it's necessary that this thing be developed. It is also necessary that we have all the facilities that go with modern television, such as colour, all the new technologies that are added for outside broadcasting. Its future is tremendous. The kind of effort that, can make, that it can bring to people will be really satisfying in the long run. Um, in-depth programs, programs, something that can go on for an hour or two, to me this is the real and proper way of local television. Thank you very much Mr John Sweeney. Now we go back to recordings and snippets. Um, John Sweeney mentioned in-depth programs and a couple of weeks ago Valley Farmer Television made what, uh, such a program. It was called uh, the BCA and inquiry and as the title suggests looked into the BCA its function etc and you'll be seeing a bit of that right after I finish talking here now after that we'll finish up by showing different aspects of a recent program and the things which is composed of like the local entertainment sports news and items of interest and interviews. The BCA is doing enough for Valley Farm. Do you think? It, what could you think? Well, think I think it could they're be doing? doing the best they can. Yeah. yeah. You can't do very much. I mean, rather coming on progress in the last since. Yeah. In the Started. last yes, and since the last yeah. few years now, I mean, it's, everything is settling down. I think they're doing about as much as they can do. You can't yeah. do that much. I mean, in a big scheme like that, you have to creep before you walk. Yeah. 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 Now, I'll just go over this. Uh, um, John. You're Mrs. Dunn. Yeah. And you're from what? What round? Drumfin. 
from Finn Road. Um, yeah. you, uh, what the, the street committee has uh, sort of collapsed in your road, hasn't it? Yeah. And it has for some yeah. time. What do you think, uh, I mean, why, do, why do you think people dropped out and lost interest? Well, I don't think there was enough of uh, young people, young wives didn't uh, go out and collect the money for the people. That's yeah. what happened. There wasn't enough. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. To support the women. Yeah. And what do you think of the BCA itself? Do you think they're, oh, they're very a good, good job or do you think they're a bad job? No, they're doing a very good job. And yeah. I wish they'd put a bus on the bus on now for us to get up to Mass on a Sunday. A bus? Yeah, a bus. That's what we want. Is it that far Since away? That yeah. new church over, we're getting drowned every Sunday going up to Mass. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Thanks very much. Thank you. Right, that's it. Thank you. It doesn't participate enough in what's going on. Here, here. They don't realise that before the executive put up help to get a community centre, there was nothing. There is no rural village in Ireland has the amenities that Ballyfermot has. I mean, you go to any place in outside of a small town, you see a cinema, a dance hall, snooker hall, billiards. You know, we've nothing here for the teenagers, and I don't. You, you. Did they have a grievance, you know? Well, I, I so, happen to know that you've been, not you personally, but that this problem has been with you for, in my knowledge personally, for at least six years. Yeah, well, That's for four years, time. for four years, the Community Association have been trying to do something about it, mm. with very, very little help from the ordinary person. At first there was participation, and the people did pay 10 or 20 pence a week, but they've dropped away now, and there's a debt of 18,000 pounds to be cleared on the community centre. And with the, when the non-stop draw starts, we hope that everybody, every householder in Ballyfermot, will participate to make Ballyfermot a better place for the ordinary person to live in and, and have their family grow up in. It's for them, it's not for anybody else. And I wouldn't like to see it back to when there was no street committees, no area committees, no community association. I mean, it's great now for to go out and see meet your neighbours and go on an outing, see the old folks taken care of. All these activities that have taken place now because there's street committees, because there's a community association and because the executive are trying to do something about it. John, so, like yes. oh, Rita. Well, if you were to ask me straight out what we would do, Mary, I think yes, yeah. what we would do, I would say, uh, ask the corporation to cancel the complete debt and let us start, as you said a moment ago, a suggestion, run our own pub, run our own cafeterias or what have you. We cannot do it until our debt is cleared to the corporation. Well, and if, I'm saying this on yeah. the <laughs> if, if, we, um, if we had no big debt, that is the big debt at the moment. If we didn't have that debt, there are millions of things we could do. What for the benefit. We have here some cross-country results from the vocational school. In the minor section, P. McCreevy, vocational school, Ballyfermot, has qualified for the Leinster finals. And in the junior section, Ballyfermot vocational school, with 42 points, were one of the three teams to qualify for the Leinster finals. In the senior section, Ballyfermot, again with 52 points, has qualified for the Leinster finals. Intermediate section, Ballet Fairmont here with 62 points, again qualified as one of the three teams for the finals. And here we have some results of last week's matches. Leinster Junior Cup, Ballet Fairmont United 4, Denor 2. Ballet Fairmont led 2-1 at half time and were the better side in most departments. But Denor had great opportunities to take advantage of the game, but failed to use it. Best players in Ballet Fairmont were Robert Norgrove, Dominic Wogan, Phil Wogan and Martin Hogan. Scored, all scored for Ballet Fairmont. And here we have some Saturday Schoolboy League. 12B, Dunsink United versus Cherry Orchard, Mellows Road, 11 o'clock. 12C, Ballyfermot United versus Cambridge Boys, Delon, 11 o'clock. 12D, 
Cherry Orchard versus Monkstown United, Delon, 11 o'clock. 12F, Luke and Celtic versus Ballyferm United, Doddsborough, 11 o'clock. 12H, Cherry Orchard versus St. Mickens, Delon, 12.30. And in the Thunder Cup, second round, Old V versus Talibais on DC's Road. And Sunday, the Harry Cannon Cup, juven juvenile section, third round. Ballyferm United versus Dunsing, Delon, at 11 o'clock. And 15B, St. Kevin's versus Cherry Orchard, Collinstown, 11 o'clock. And 17B, Monkstown versus Ballyferm United, Dunedin Park, sorry, 2.30. And uh, Mini Olympics news, athletics. All road and area finals must be finished by the 27th of April, the day of the grand final. All road winners must produce to the area committees names, addresses and birth certificates for e of each winner. Each road is entitled to have one representative in each final of the area finals.